so this video this is a short video I'm going to make here just talking about uh, more I'm kind of expanding on what I talked about last week about parallel effect compression or par parallel effects versus uh, effects in series okay and I mentioned briefly the idea of compressing against a track um, that you're using for a reverb or something and I just wanted to expound on that and really give you an show you how something like that could work um, so let me first just go through <laughs> sorry my stray cat who lives in our house is sitting on the floor here staring at me with the nastiest look she is anyways sorry so um, let me just explain buses again, okay? Because I do think this is a really hard thing for people to understand, and, and hopefully this will help seeing it this way. So um, buses are used, and aux channels, right, are used in several ways. If we think about, first of all, um, just a, your basic channel strip, normally we send that channel strip to the output, right? We just send it out. So if we wanted to have a reverb or a delay that wasn't affecting the whole track we could send that sound send some of our sound to an, another channel okay and what that does it allows us to do all kinds of really cool stuff by isolating effects on their own channels so normally if I have a reverb on here as you know and this used to be the case actually that this would affect everything so Logic has changed and most DAWs have changed now that if I add a reverb, so if I go here, sorry, let me add a reverb. Chromoverb's a great dry and wet signals, okay, which is really nice because it actually allows us to bypass the use of a bus because we can now say what the, what the dry button does here is it says send the entire mix without reverb out the output. That's what dry does. And then what I'm saying is take half of the dry signal and add 50% reverb to that volume, okay? So it'd be like if my, if my signal was at 12 dB, then 6 dB would be sent to the reverb if it was at 50%. If I turn dry completely off, what I get is um, only 50% reverb, okay? So most of the time, so this allows us to send the signal dry and also put reverb into it with the dry and wet here, which is really nice. But that is not always use, not useful for is if we want to mix things together and add a reverb to all of them, okay, which can be really useful. So imagine you have all your drums on one on several separate channels, but you want to send them all to a specific bus and then put a reverb on that. All right, so since this is our normal setup, we have three components here that really um, make up using a bus or an aux, all right? First is the aux channel, and that is an empty channel used for effects, and it, they can be used for all kinds of things, but this is generally the concept is that we have a channel, and in Pro Tools, you might know, you have to create that aux channel. It doesn't happen automatically. In Logic, it, this, and same with Ableton. Well, Ableton's a little different, but in Logic, if you s send to a specific bus number, then it automatically creates the aux channel automatically, okay? The send is the amount of gain sent to the aux channel, and then the last term here is the bus, and that's the channel that the gain is sent on. It's a variable number or letter, right? It's the de def definition of the channel. So. If I create an aux channel, I'm going to have an input of, of bus 1 on it, okay? Or I'm going to have an input of bus 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my reverb. Normally, if it could be any effect. I would move the effect to the, to the aux channel. And then on my main channel here, I would have a send button that I would then change to bus 1. And then obviously I'm going to then increase the volume knob and I'll show you this in logic in just a second. I'm going to increase this volume knob to, to decide how much I'm sending to this bus that then has reverb on it. Okay. And what that then, and then of course, both of these stereo output. 
So it does several things. It makes our volume louder, right? Because the first thing that happens is I'm now kind of doubling my sound by passing it through a reverb and sending it out. This is also parallel effects, right? I'm using parallel um, a, a parallel signal with reverb on it that's sounding at the same time as my regular channel. Okay, so. Um, the thing now too is that what's what's nice about this is if bus one is a reverb, like a specific reverb or a specific something, some effect that I like, I can now um, send from multiple channels, right? Every channel could be sending to bus one. Therefore, bus one has a bunch of channels that are all getting the same reverb and it's going out the output, okay? So that's the main use for busing. Right, is this sending sound to a different channel so that I can uh, add an effect to it in addition, okay? Now, and, and if you think about it, there are a lot of effects that t take the entire signal, okay? So uh, let me, let's go back to logic. Let's take, let's take, get an example. So, uh, does a bit crusher do this? No, see, so anytime there's a mix, that, that allows me to actually decide how much of the signal do I want to go through this this uh, effect, okay? And more and more that is common with effects to have a mix. The stereo delay has a mix as well, right? The, the output mix so I can get more dry signal. Um, let's look under like the ring shifter, for instance. So the, the, the ring shifter also has a, a mix because it has the dry and the wet. See this here? So that tells me how much of the signal is getting the effect. Uh, let's look at the roto cabinet, which I really like actually. Um, so this one looks like it's something that does not have mix. So as you can see, there is nothing on here that says the amount of roto cabinet that I'm putting on a, an effect. So it's an all or nothing effect, right? Everything that I do in here is going to affect the entire audio signal as it comes out. Um, so imagine though, if so if I wanted to add some roto cabinet obviously to a sound, but keep the original, the, the way to do that is with a bus. So I would, if I would wanted to do that, I would go click on here to add, or sorry, go to the sends. And I have all these sends here that I used earlier, but I'm just gonna forget about them. I'm gonna go down to the send, choose an empty bus, and look, there, I mean, there are up, up to 256 buses, so you can pick any one of these. It's arbitrary, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna pick bus four, because it's empty. So, what bus four has chosen as its channel, notice that bus four, the input is bus four, but because I have all these other aux channels already made, it's called aux 11, okay? Now I, called, I could call this roto, all right? And the nice thing about calling it roto now is that, did I spell roto right? I don't know. Um, my, if I go now to bus, you'll see roto on bus four, bus four roto, okay? So now under the effects of the roto, I'm a roto cabinet, a rotor cabinet, right. Um, I'm going to click on this, this uh, sound, right? So now on this channel, um, yeah, because it means rotary. Um, there's the roto cabinet is on here and I have this effect, right? And now I turn this little knob, this tiny little knob here, I turn this all the way to wherever I want it, right? If it's at zero, that means the entire signal is going to the roto cabinet through the bus, okay? But remember that the sound is also outputting without the roto cabinet from the main channel strip, okay? So let's talk about another really cool thing then. Um, I can now also then, this is really useful. I can now go in here and add other effects just onto the roto cabinet, okay? So imagine, I'm gonna turn this out off to no output. So right now, all we're gonna hear is the roto cabinet. Touch my skin. So all we're hearing right now is this bus. If I turn the bus off, 
It's going to go away. No sound. Okay. So if I want now, the cool thing now, man, this is just probably not very loud for you at all. It's probably really hard to hear. If I want to now, I can do things like this, put an EQ on the roto cabinet itself, right? Because the roto cabinet is by itself on its own track, I could do something interesting with its EQ, right? Maybe I want to do something that's kind of dramatic. I don't know. Um, So now I have the opportunity though to um, add effects to just the roto cabinet because it's on its own track. Obviously that's gonna wanna be first, the, the, the EQ. So, um, you know, imagine I wanna add a flanger or something onto the roto cabinet. Here it is. So I'm adding effects now to just this channel that has the roto cabinet instead of the entire mix, okay? And that can be really powerful. So let me explain what I mean. As I talked about before, um, let me clear these out. One of the most useful things to do actually is to take your signal. Um, let's go to the main output here at the bottom. Stereo out. I'm just gonna crank this up. Touch my skin. So you can really hear it, okay? Let's go up to full volume. Touch my skin. So what I'm going to do now is go back to that channel. Where is it? Here it is. And I'm actually going to send, um, make a new send. I'm just going to call this, I'm going to use bus 18 because it's empty. And I'm going to call this um, delay compress. Okay. Delay, I'm going to call it delay vox for voices. So and then on this channel, I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to add an EQ just, just for now, um, just to have something there. Then I'm going to go to the delay. All right, I'm going to choose stereo delay. And I'm going to crank the feedback up a bit here so it's louder. You can see my output mix is at 100%. Wow, I wonder if that's because I put it on a on a um, on an aux. I've never seen it do that. Um, so what's going to happen now is because I'm send, I'm controlling the amount that's being delayed from my little send knob here, right? So normally that's exactly what you would do is that I would go into this effect and turn the right and left all the way up to 100% because I'm going to control the amount that I'm going to get from here, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a compressor and I'm going to use it in a very specific way. I'm going to use sidechain compression, which we've talked about before. That's the idea that one channel listens to another channel and adapts to it, right? So I'm going to go to my compressor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that it listens to itself. Okay, now this track's called Vocals. So I'm going to go up here to sidechain. I'm going to go to audio and then the track called Vocals. Where is that? Ooh. Where are the, all these tracks? Vocals, there it is, okay? So I should now see some metering from this. When I... So right now you're hearing a lot of delay, right? What I wanna do is actually have the compressor compress the sound, compress the delay away from the vocals when the voice is singing. Set my audio again to my bus, to my vocals, because that's the same track that is actually getting the sound. But what I wanted to do is, when the voice is singing, I want it to push the delay out of the way, right? Because delay is notorious for making vocals not understandable, because it's like 10 people talking at once. So if, when the vocals are really singing, the compressor is going to squeeze that delay down and then it will pop back up when the, the when the voice is at the end of a phrase, for instance, is a great place for the delay to ring out, okay? So my threshold is pretty high. I want, to hear, I want the compressor to engage pretty easily. My ratio is really high. Look, I'm at 8.8 to 1, meaning that it's going to be really compressed. Eight times at one, um, you know, if something was at... Uh, 
eight, just eight times, you know, if I, I'd have to do some math. If the decibels were eight decibels, it would convert it into one decibel, right? Um, I'm going to turn the makeup off just so it doesn't change the volume at all. And the release time you can see is fairly long too, and 350 milliseconds. That gives the compressor a chance to flex out when it ends, okay? So listen to what happens now. The delay is going to be like out of the way when the compressor is engaging. So it's a big difference. Let's listen to it without the compressor on. Okay, so you can see the difference. The compressor really helps to push that out of the way, right? Because, um, it, right? So let's talk to about, oh, what did I do? I just messed this up. So I also want to show you what I meant, what I was talking about earlier, in that I can now also go and add some more effects on here. But this is only going to affect the, um, the delay only, right? Because the delay is coming through this channel. So let me go to, let me do something like, I don't know, something you can hear easily. Let's do the roto cabinet. Actually, no, let's do the, the ring shifter because it's super weird. Um, but this should only affect the, the uh, repetitions of the sound. Do warped here. Close my eyes. We'll be all right so some of these are super weird. But it's happening in the background, right? Only the delays are getting ring shifted, which is really a cool thing, a cool effect you can do to your track. Okay. So let me, you know, while I'm talking about this, I might as well finish and explain the last little bit of how the other way that buses are used, okay? So any again, the most common way is this way, where we're using the bus as an auxiliary channel. We're sending um, some of our sound from multiple channels over to that bus so that we can add an effect on it in parallel effecting, right, as a parallel effect. The other way is to actually output um, to a bus and bypass a signal. So let me explain that. This is our normal setup for any sound, right? We have a bunch of channels and they go to this stereo output. Okay. Now what I can do now is I can bypass that stereo output by changing the, the channel output of all of the, the sound to a bus. So instead of the sound outputting to the stereo, it's now outputting to bus one. Okay, and on bus one, I could do something, uh, um, you know, this way, I do this all the time for all kinds of things. One of them is drums, like drums need to be mixed together and then mixed in the main mix. And the nice thing is if I make a drum bus that all the drums go to, then suddenly I have control over all the drums with a single slider, right, which is really useful. Say I wanted to add reverb to all the drums too. I could do this by sending them or outputting them all to the bus first and then putting that effect on them so they all get it. All right, so this is a really useful way of, of doing this. Um, and the way that translates in, you know, um, over here in Logic is that and I've ar I'm already doing this with this these vocals. So right now these vocals are bus they're outputting. Normally this says stereo out, right? That's the default for Logic. But what I'm doing is I'm first sending them to a bus, and my bus is actually called All Music. And the reason I have an All Music bus, actually I don't know why I have an All Music bus because there's nothing on it. Oh, there there was there is a compressor. Um, you know, I might, but I, if I wanted to do some global effects, like maybe some really cool stutter effects on everything, or maybe an EQ compressed 
uh, thing that happens on something, I could send all the music to a specific bus and then throw that effect on it, right? Which it can be re could be really cool. So anyway, so that is the other way that buses are used. They're basically used to consolidate the output of a bunch of tracks onto another track, an aux channel, that then gets effects on it, okay? Um, and most likely in this mix, I haven't looked at this in a long time, but, um, oh, everything is outputting to bus 30. I'm surprised I don't have a drum bus. Usually I do, um, but this is an old mix. I'm smarter now, so... Anyways, hopefully some of this is useful for you um, in explaining how buses work, you know, how we use them and how, you know, they can also, you know, the nice thing about this too is if I have 30 tracks that I want to add reverb onto, um, do I, it's way more wasteful to the CPU to have 30 reverbs, right? I can now just send them all to one track and put a reverb on that one track. And then I have everything has that effect to it. So it's a really useful tool for making that kind of consolidating a bunch of effects together. Also, it's important to remember that, you know, if I have 30 reverbs, even with the same setting, and they're all outputting, that's going to sound a little different than if I put a reverb on a, on a signal that has all of them consolidated first. So it is going to be a little bit of a different sound if we mix everything together first and then put it on, put a reverb on it. Okay. Um, all right. Talk to you soon. Bye.